Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to have briefed the United Nations Security Council in my capacity of a chairman in office of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Both the United Nations and the OECE work to maintain international peace and security and safeguard the respect for international law, including the basic human rights and fundamental freedoms. This is why they both condemned in the strongest terms the military aggression of Russia on Ukraine. Indiscriminate attacks against civilians, shelling hospitals and schools is not only inhuman. It is nothing but a crime under international law. The OEC Polish chairmanship is now facing a completely different reality than a month ago. The war in Ukraine has dominated its agenda almost completely. Russian aggression shakes the very foundation of the OEC. We see Russia defy its primary responsibility to act as a guardian of international peace and security, both as a member of OEC as well as the permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Instead, it chooses to act as an aggressor. This long planned military attack with the participation of another state, Belarus, is unprovoked, unjustified, and illegal. Such a flagrant breach of OECE principles and commitments poses questions about stability of the rules-based order. Still, we believe OEC is able to keep the states talking in good times and bad. Poland is convinced it is in the best interest of the organization and its participating states to work on proper modus operandi to fulfill OEC mandate. Right now, the primary focus of OEC work in Ukraine will be to help avert humanitarian crisis and create the conditions for assistance and evacuation. OSCE stands ready to continue its cooperation with the United Nations. We have established close coordination with the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, International Organization for Migration and the International Committee of the Red Cross. The OEC wel welcomes any genuine effort that contributes to stopping the ongoing hostilities and can lead to finding a sustainable, peaceful solution. With that said, talk must be accompanied by actions. I reiterate the joint call I made with OSCE Secretary General Helga Schmidt on the very first day of the Russian aggression for the immediate cessation of all military activities. We call on Russia to stop the deplorable acts. We call on Russia to stop shelling civilians while attempts of evacuation. We call on Russia to stop shelling and dropping bombs on homes, hospitals, 
and streets full of innocent people, most of whom are children and women. We call on Russia to honor its international obligations and commitments. Any sustainable political solution must fully respect sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine within its international recognized borders. Finally, we call on Russia to engage in a meaningful and substantial dialogue to seek a peaceful solution to the current crisis. The door to diplomacy is still open. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Rao. It's Pamela Fall from CBS News. You have accommodated so many refugees. At what point is that a problem for Poland? How many can you take in, and what do you need to do that? Thank you. Ma'am, I must say that we used to host 1.5 million people before this crisis. So. The Ukrainians who visited us and who decided to stay with us were living, working, studying, and learning in Poland. Since the beginning of aggression, we have received 1.6 million Ukrainians. The overwhelming majority of them are in touch with their friends and relatives who already live in Poland. But the Polish government is assisting the help, spontaneous support of Polish society that is being extended to them. So we have just adopted the Bill of Law that gives all the privileges that we, the Polish citizens, enjoy in respect of healthcare, opportunities to learn and study in Polish schools and Polish universities. Also, the access to labor market and also the opportunity to take part in our economic life, for example, by launching their own businesses in Poland. So all that indicates that we are ready to host a considerable number of our Ukrainian neighbors who are in need. But certainly, no country can do anything like that on its own. So it's, let me just tell you that when Europe went through the immigration crisis in 2015, the continent as a whole received less than one million immigrants. Now in Poland alone, we have uh, already 1.6 million refugees of war. And think about other neighboring countries which accepted a smaller portion, but still a very considerable of this influx. So it's more than obvious that, as I said, there is no country in the world that can handle this kind of humanitarian crisis on its own. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. 
Hello, Mr. Minister. I'm Margaret Bashir with the Voice of America. Um, in your national capacity, I'd like to ask you, uh, the United States has expressed objections uh, to Poland transferring its MiG jets to Ukraine. Ukraine is still asking for them. Have you been in touch with your Ukrainian counterpart to try and find a workaround to still deliver these jets? Is this still a possibility? I'm in touch with our American counterparts with our NATO and European Union counterparts, and of course with the Ukrainian ones. As far as your question is concerned, I can only say that this kind of, this kind of decision has to be made by the NATO alliance as a whole, but not a one member state, because the impact of this kind of decision is going to affect the alliance as a whole. So there is no one single NATO member who could make this decision for the rest of the alliance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye.